Do you remember the 21st night of September? Yes, it is the 21st of September and in this video all about GarageBand here on the iPhone and the iPad, we're going to be talking about editing our MIDI tracks and why not use the classic September by Earth, Wind and Fire. So, let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record and release your best music. Or, in this instance, I'll be using other people's music and risking a copyright strike here on the channel. But that's okay, I'm going to do it because it's going to be fun. Okay, you can stop that for now. Um, what I'm going to be looking at today is editing MIDI because in the new version 2.3.6 of GarageBand here on the iPad or the iPhone, we now have the ability to import MIDI tracks and not only single tracks of MIDI and MIDI drum loops as I've demonstrated in previous videos, but entire MIDI songs such as this classic MIDI version of Earth, Wind and Fire's September. And being the 21st of September, this is going to be funny for exactly one day. And then it's just going to hopefully be an educational video about editing MIDI. So let's jump in now and take a look at how we can edit this MIDI. We've got the track in here. You can see it's defaulted to a bunch of things. There's some things we want to change. Let's jump in and change those now. So here we are in GarageBand here on the iPhone, the same basic setup in the iPad. Now what I've done is I've imported the MIDI file. Now I've got a video which I'll link up the top there and down below in the description about how to import MIDI files. So I won't show you that again here. Check that out if you need to know how. But once we've imported a multi-track MIDI file, you'll see here that it allocates these to instruments using its sort of best possible matching. So things here like our brass section, trumpet, alto sex, and trombone, it's all put over to the brass ensemble. So that is okay, but obviously we're not gonna have that differentiation in the instruments because GarageBand doesn't have any of those instruments. So it does its best job, which is why when you heard in the intro there, it sounded okay, but there's some things that we'd probably tweak and change as we go through here. So what I thought I'd show is the things that I've started doing, I've been playing with a few of these sort of tracks and the things I've been doing to just sort of start the editing process. Now the first thing you might have noticed is that uh, a lot of these tracks are actually really loud. They're clipping, you can see those little orange uh, dots that we get there, means that the track volume is clipping and is too high. So we do want to tame these down, but to do that we're going to have to turn off this automation. So to do that we're going to tap here, we're going to tap right there on that piano, go to automation, and now to turn off our automation all we need to do is tap on these yellow automation. You can see here that as we do this we can now use our volume sliders once again to adjust our volume, which is what we're going to do in the next step. We're going to drop down our volume. Now, there's no way to drop all of these volume together. So if you had a regular digital audio workstation, what you'd do is you'd multi-select all these tracks and then you would drop the volume down. But in GarageBand here, unfortunately, we can only do it one track at a time because we can't do any sort of multi-track selection, which is a little bit of a pain. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is we'll just drop these tracks down. I'm going to drop them all down by about a quarter. This should just get rid of those clips and give us a slightly better overall volume and gain here. So let's now take a listen now that we've done that. Let's jump down to a section here and hit play. There we go, just a few little adjustments there, and I think we've got a pretty reasonable sort of static mix. And obviously I'd go in and spend a lot more time doing this if I was gonna make this a produced song, but for now, I just wanted to show a couple of these concepts that I do when I start editing something like that that I've imported. And this is uh, applicable to any track, I'm just using it for MIDI tracks here. Obviously the same sort of process for another track, if you're importing audio files or whatever, you wanna get that static mix, that balance right from the outset so that you can continue on with your mixing process. Okay, we've got our static mix going on here. We have uh, removed all the automation. Now let's jump into the actual editing. Now I've got an entire series about editing, so I won't go into a lot of detail here, but I will link those down in the description so you can learn about editing here in GarageBand. But any of these MIDI tracks, if we tap on them, tap again and go edit, we can actually come in here to our editing window and then we have full control over all of these notes that we have here. So if we actually, what I should have done is actually uh, solo this. So we'll come out here, we'll solo it, we'll tap again, we'll tap and we'll go edit. And what we can do is play back this acoustic guitar part and take a listen to what this is sounding like at the start here. So let's just jump in. 
So the problem you're going to have with MIDI is that the realism of your instruments isn't going to be great. And if I wanted to spend a lot of time, I would actually grab my real guitars and replay these tracks. But I just wanted to show you a few concepts. So what I might want to do here is instead of this being an octave, so you can see here at the moment we've got this note up here and this note down here. But what if I wanted to actually make that a fifth instead of an octave? Well, I could grab each individual note and move it down like that, but that's obviously going to take me a long time. The good part about editing MIDI is that we can actually tap outside of here and drag over everything, and then we can just tap and hold and drag every note down like that. So now if we wanted a bit of a sound like this, we're going to get the fifth instead of the whole octave. And let's hear what that adjustment there, now that we've moved those notes, sounds like back in our mix. Not bad, but you know what? I'm hearing something horrible that's standing out, and that is this overdriven guitar down here. Let's just solo this one and take a bit of a listen to this. Yeah, classic fake MIDI guitar, and unfortunately, there's not much we can do about this. So what I'm actually gonna do is let's edit this and let's remove this from our arrangement. Now, in the original arrangement, the Earth, Wind & Fire version, this is a really cool sort of 70s disco funk guitar that is playing sort of like a but in this uh, version, it just does not sound good. So we're gonna tap. So we've done the same thing. We've highlighted all of those. We'll tap and we'll go delete and then hit done. So we can very quickly adjust our arrangement here by deleting parts that we don't want as well. So now if we listen to this. And yeah, it's lost a little bit of that attack, but you know, it, I think it's better than what we had in there before. Let's come in here and have a look now because I heard something weird here with this slap bass. I reckon it was this track and it was some uh, pitch bending and pitch modulation. So let's just listen to this solo and see if I can find what I'm looking at here. So yeah, you heard that little whoop that was in there and I think there's some more sort of pronounced versions down here. Yeah, take a listen to that. That buiu is a is a pitch bend or a modulation that has been added to the MIDI information. Now, when we come in here to edit, the unfortunate thing is that we can't see a lot of that information here in iOS. So if we play this back again, so it's right in the middle of this note, yeah, but when we tap on it, it's just that note. And a, a weird thing here is also that it seems to have pitched this up an entire octave, and I'll show you how to change that in a moment. But for now, if we wanted to actually remove that, what we'd need to do is delete the note there, and then to actually add a note in, we actually turn on our note adding feature up the top here, and then we completely forget where that note was and what note it was. I think it was somewhere like here. Let's just play this back and see what that was. Okay, so it wasn't that note. I think it might have been like there. Yeah, so we can do that. So to add notes in, we just turn on our little uh, lock icon up the top here, and then we can tap to actually add notes. Let's just undo those, and then we can move those around and adjust the length of the notes with our length slider here, and the position by moving them side to side. So another cool way to adjust and to edit our MIDI. But I just wanted to show you that because if you're noticing things like pitch bends and things in there, you might be going, cool, how do I do that? Well, you can do it with the virtual instruments, but you can't see the MIDI information if it's been imported because it does not show up here. Anyway, let's move on from that. So we've shown you how to move notes, to delete notes, to add notes into our MIDI and to adjust that volume and the automation. The other thing that we can do is what we talked about is actually change the pitching. Now here you can see the transposition here when we go in, sorry, I'll show you where we went in. We tap, we tap again, we go settings, and in the transposition, it's up one octave, which is why it's playing this bass so high. So let's drop that down so it's up nothing. And now if we come back and play this bass, let's just solo it again. We've still got that weird pitch bend going on there, but it is actually pitched down where it needs to be. And obviously if we wanted this even lower, we could come into settings, we could transpose it down another octave and it would sound even lower. Which is potentially where it needs to be actually. So we'll leave it as that for now. We'll leave it down that octave and we will continue on here. So that is the, the basics, I guess, of changing some of these. The other things we can do is actually change instruments. So 
Here we've got all of these are brass ensemble, but let's say we wanted to make this alto sax a different instrument. We can tap on the little piano icon up here. Now these are all keyboard instruments, but they, they do borrow from some of our other touch instruments. And all of those, if we tap in the top left here and go to brass ensemble, we can change them all here. They're all under other. So under keyboard and other is all of our sort of woodwind and other instruments. So let's change this out to a French horn, shall we? And then let's just take a listen to what that sax part sounds like with a French horn. Yeah, not bad. So, you know, we could we could play around with that and, and we could, like, unfortunately, we don't have things like trumpets and saxophones and things here in GarageBand iOS, hopefully in the future, because they are a little bit of a, a little bit of a lacking thing that's missing at the moment. So we'll put, we'll cross our fingers for that in the future. But for now, we have what we have. So that is how we can change our instruments. We've talked about, actually, we haven't talked about velocity. So the other thing we can edit here is if we come in here, we can actually edit the velocity. So we can tap on a note tap it again and go to velocity and we can up and down the velocity of each individual note. Now, we can change the velocity of a whole series of notes like this, but they do have to already be the same velocity. So if we tap velocity and drop all of these down like that and play this back, so we'll need to solo that, won't we? So we can actually hear what it's doing. So let's just re-solo and just see if this has done anything. So yes, yeah, so because those were all the same, we could drop them down using that velocity. But now we've got multiple velocities in our notes. So if we wanted to re-edit these again, it can just get a little bit fiddly. You're better off using your volume sliders for your overall volume rather than going and playing with velocity because it's not always gonna be perfect. Um, all right, one more, there's plenty we could talk about here, but uh, I'm conscious that we, I've been ranting for a while. So the one more cool thing that we can do with MIDI that I'll show you here is to actually transpose our whole song. So we can transpose, we'll show how we can transpose octaves and even semitones and tones before by going into the settings like we did with our bass but we can also transpose the whole song by tapping on the settings in the top right here and in our key signature we can change this so at the moment it's in a major if we were to change this to say d major you can see behind there you may not have seen but it's changed all of our notes as well so when we play this back now it sounds absolutely terrible because it's transposed it to a very low key that it doesn't actually work with. And this is the problem with this is we can't tell it whether to go up or down. So we can't say transpose down to D or up to D, but let's uh, change this now and put it into B major. What this should do now is actually put the notes higher because it'll put it up above A. It does, and now it sounds even worse. So let's undo that and bring us back to our original sound. We're ready to go. So that is all we are going to go in with this. I hope you found this interesting, a little bit entertaining, perhaps. It's just a little bit of fun that I wanted to have because the last few videos have all been very instructional and very serious. And uh, I wanted to show you that the MIDI feature can be fun. Just find any random MIDI file, drag it over into your GarageBand projects and start playing with it. You're going to have a whole lot of fun. And the good thing about this is you're going to learn because even like things like this brass sound, I've learned some pretty cool tricks that they use in the brass sound here. You can see at the start of some of these notes, they've got these little other notes. Like if we play this little bit here, that like that's a really cool brass effect and it's hard to replicate that. But I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to start using that. That sort of going quickly from one note to another is a good effect. So anyway, that is going to do it. If you've got comments, questions or suggestions, or you've been playing with MIDI and want to tell me all about it, let me know down in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you would like to check out two more videos all about editing here in GarageBand, you can check those out in the links below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.